Here. So they dump this stuff and we build it up, build it up. We told them now, you're going to have to start dropping truckloads here on the upper fill. Everybody pitched in. We had a 24-hour guard. Had that come over, boom, the whole thing would have went down. The Great Cloud Crossing originally was a timber bridge back in the early 1900s. About 1923 is when the culverts went in and there was fill placed across there to create the causeway. And then in 1965, when the flood came, that's when they had to raise the road and the culverts were essentially buried and crushed. 1965, I was the chairman of the town board. We knew it was coming. We river folks knew it because we had tremendous snowpacks up north. And then we had a quick thaw. And it, it ruined the place because you couldn't swim in it, you couldn't boat in it. There's no flowing water there, so it just becomes very stagnant. And so we have very, very low, if any, oxygen levels. So there's really no fish habitat there, and the algae blooms take over. Then the zebra mussels came in, and they were a pain on the bottom of boats and docks and everything. It's infested with invasive species as far as plant growth. But this weed thing, uh, just absolutely destroyed it down here, so something had to be done. And so by reconnecting to the main river and re-establishing that flow, we hope to improve the water quality to the point that oxygen levels come back, the algae won't bloom, we get good water quality in there, we'll be able to change the plant habitat and really restore the habitat back there for the fisheries and other aquatic life. In the early 2000s, Township had a couple of well, reports done by some master students at the uh, University of Minnesota. It's called a capstone project that they do. So those projects really kind of spurred on the effort to get this project rolling. We've got support from all the agencies, National Park Service, the Corps of Engineers, uh, DNR, PCA, everybody. It's a state water trail, it's a national park. You know, you don't see a project like this where everybody agrees very often. We looked at three different options as far as the project. We looked at a small culvert connection, we looked at a large culvert connection, and we looked at a bridge connection. So the bridge is the plan. It creates the largest amount of flow, which gives us the largest footprint of ecological and aquatic habitat restoration back there. We're using a precast span segment. It provides that access. We get all the transportation benefits. We'll actually be raising the road one more foot of freeboard for, for high water events. But it also brings along the secondary benefits of navigation. So people will be able to get through there with a boat. And the theory is that we get a flow in here and the weeds will go down and they will not get the sunlight and eventually gone. And so that we have good clean water for fish habitat and other shorebirds and things like that. By restoring that flow, we're, gonna, we're looking at approximately uh, 100 acres of aquatic habitat and about five miles of shoreline restoration that we think we'll achieve. Mm -hmm.